I'm gonna have to have a talk with Isla about putting her equipment in the shed at the end of the day. Item number one this morning is to transfer some of our carryover soybeans from last year into a different bin because we like to transfer them so they don't sit too long without moving and then we'll have dry beans on the bottom of that bin and then we're gonna put these trucks and a grain cart that's full down at the field into that bin and we're gonna start filling that as our soybean bin. But first I wanna restart that. But first I want to relabel the controls for the leg down at the bottom of the leg because they changed some stuff up top so things are labeled wrong which could be a potentially very large problem. Those are last year's beans on the bottom there. We made sure all the sumps are clean and free and clear, which they are. Then we had an issue up top with the overhead conveyor. I'll try to show you that. It's the, uh, it's the auger at the top of the bins that crosses right there. That auger had an issue up here with a broken bolt, so I had to climb up there with a uh, pipe wrench, get that opened up to get the gate opened up so that we can get our beans in the bin that we want them in. There's always a lot of shuffling in the mornings during harvest, but particularly when you're getting started and everything's just getting going. There's a lot of back and forth, up and down, in and out kind of stuff that you, you want to make sure everything's right because half this stuff has not run in about 11 months. Here's a good teachable moment for soybeans, for people that don't have soybean experience. You can see how wet this grass is. It gets my boots wet. At night, when the wind goes down, the sun's gone, we get a really, really heavy dew. It collects on the soybean plants the same as it does on the grass. And then you can't thresh them out because those plants actually soak that moisture up. Moisture. People, uh, people are commenting about how often I say moisture. I guess I'm a soybean farmer. I'm used to using that word. But anyway, they will soak that water up and then you can't thresh them out and it doesn't do a good job. So we have to wait until this sun burns that dew off and dries the plants out again. Which is why it's not all bad to have some stuff to do in the mornings anyway. We always kind of save these odd jobs for the mornings because we know we're going to have to deal with this kind of stuff. So deal with it when the plants are wet. Did I say that correctly? I think you follow. So this truck is full of dry beans from harvesting last night. We're going to run them right into the pits and dump them into the bin that we've got ready up there now. We've got wet beans in there from when we started yesterday that are at that 16 to 18, maybe even 19% on some of them, which we're gonna run through the grain dryer. But when I switched fields, they started coming out a lot drier. So these ones are going straight into the bin and we'll put air on them. 13? Yeah. Without temperature. Put the temp on it or 15. Like something's grabbing. Yeah. But the rear didn't want to go last night either? No, it did the same thing after three, four times it did go. Should I try and close it again right now? See if it does it again. It's like it didn't even close all the way there. I mean we got it moving now. Do you think it's closed all the way, Jim? Yeah. Seems like it works now. To the field we go. Oil check. I need both hands for that. Five to seven, you good to go? Right behind you. What the? equipment in a field? Remember that problem we had with the header yesterday in my last video where we couldn't get it working right and all we had to do is calibrate it? We got all kinds of issues now and it's not going to let me calibrate it. And we know it's in the electrical pin connection down here. I just want to combine soybeans. Center height sensor is out of range. Well, I better
better find it and bring it in range, I guess. I can get it going and I can cut beans with it, but there's no control of anything. It actually gave me six different warnings when I turned it on this time. But I can move the header up and down. I'm just going to manually here take a few beans and see if something wakes up. If not, I'll try unplugging and plugging it back in again, but I'm frustrated. Here is where we believe the issue is. This is the electrical connection point for everything that controls this header. And where it plugs into this side of the combine, apparently there's some pins in here that may have been damaged and now are not communicating properly. I can see now that I have multiple different codes. Seven of them total. Uh-huh. Great. This is definitely a non-speedy, unfortunate start to our harvest. Here's the plan now. I'm going to cut some beans while those guys run and get that other header. I may as well keep moving since I can. It's just uh, going to be beeping at me in an annoying way. And uh, it's not right. If there are several things it doesn't have control of, but I can run it manually and hopefully keep it out of the mud and at least we're moving while they go get that other header. I have made the decision to go around this tremendously wet, treme tremendous, you know what I'm saying, I'm going around the mud. It's a little shiny in there, which is a good indication of the scariest spots. go. It's actually going through this pretty decent so far. There's a good amount of water standing there in an area where I have never seen water stand before. I wanted to stop here on the end and kind of get a better look at our challenge here. This is obviously a wetter area but I've never seen water stand in here this time of year. Not only is it standing, it's actually flowing from all the way down all of this side hill. There's running water coming down the side hill. You can see my tracks where I came through there. Luckily, two days from now, we've got two inches of rain forecasted to come on that day alone. Once we get to that point, today is beautiful out, but once we get to that point, we get two more inches of rain out here, and then highs in the 30s, we're gonna have problems. There probably won't be a lot of tillage done. There probably won't be much fertilizer put on this fall. We may have to wait until the ground freezes before we even get back to soybeans. It could get tougher. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm staying optimistic about it, but it could be a longer fall than I was even anticipating at this point. At least once we get out of the low areas, we've got some pretty solid beans in a lot of spots here in this field. I've got Midwest machinery waiting for me behind the grain cart up here, which was surprisingly quick. And then, and then I've got this guy over here taking photos of me. Must be the paparazzi or something. Mmm, paparazzi. Makes me want pizza. These boys are on it. Here's the update. Midwest machinery was out. We unhooked the connection again. Took the actual electric pin pack off the feeder house of the machine, off the combine. Everything looked good. Pulled the cover back. Wires all look good. Everything looks good put it back together and ran it and now it works. We're pretty sure again now this time that it's actually on the combine side. It's not in the header side. So I'm running our header, the same header, our new header, on the same machine without changing anything. It's one of those problems that isn't really broke so you don't know what to fix. We'll just not unhook it for a while. We got a lot of acres we can do here. Okay. The neighbor's pasture typically has hardly any water in it. Just another random fun fact from the millennial farmer. Are you getting the hint that our soil is saturated and it's wet here in central Minnesota? Well, I thought I was gonna get stuck. But I didn't. That's just 
too bad for you guys. You don't get to see me get stuck right now. You don't get to see me get stuck right now. Ha! Ah, I'm all sweaty now. We're struggling to find spots to dump on the go because we can never go long enough to get the tank empty back here without running into mud spots. You don't want to be side by side when the mud spots come and you can't steer because this thing will interact with that thing and cause a lot of problems. See this? I need more go-go juice. There's my diesel, my diesel tank. Two boards sitting down there, are you, Seven? Yeah, I was kind of wondering if you guys were uh, making that fuel up there or what. We had to refine it first. He's got a pretty decent load on the cart there, and we just went through a soft spot that the combine struggled in a bit. Honestly, I think that grain cart loaded up is going to have less issues than what this combine is with any mud. Stuck. We got an empty semi. Stuck. It's hard to find good help. Oh, and, and just for his own protection, it wasn't Jim this time. It wasn't Jim. And it wasn't me. So... It's definitely too wet to run any decent tillage out here. So, since we got the semi stuck, Dad is gonna take the full truck home and grab the 9560, unhook the deep bander chisel plow rig, and we're gonna have the 9560 out here with the big rope on it just for pulling things out, because there's a chance that we might continue getting more equipment stuck. Just a chance. Getting her full in a squishy spot. I don't see her sinking. He left some streaks, but he didn't have any issues. Sweet. A little extra sloppy out here. And we really need checks for the grain cards. Well, Mouse, you planted her pretty good. Kinsey down. It's just a, just a normal day for us around here. Back to work. Dad has had some other issues back at the yard, so he doesn't have that other tractor over here yet. But these things are starting to shell out really easily. I'm getting some shattering at the head. These things are drying out. It's a warm day. The sun's been beating on them hard for a couple days now, and we've got enough of a breeze, so they're getting dry drying out a lot but the plants have really gotten brittle so I slowed the machine down and opened it up some to make it thresh a little bit easier and not be so aggressive on it on the beans that is so I'm gonna check the job I'm doing they're dry check the job that I'm doing back here make sure I'm not leaving any on the ground with my new changes Uh oh don't worry about that little guy we look okay However, it is definitely sloppy. I know how you kids like them sloppy. Are you really planning on pulling that thing out by yourself? I don't know, you think I should try it? I haven't been over there to see it. It's down three, four inches. It's slimy. I think we got a little one in the rock trap again. This deer must have just eaten it up and spit it out. That's kind of what they do. They just handle their own problems, you know? There it is. It's not a rock. It was wood. That's a lot better than, than a rock. His teeth were made of wood. Well, it sounds like Dad got to have all the fun and pull that truck out on his own. It's not fair. She's getting there. Almost, almost got full that time. A little room left. Seven, that is easily as full as we've had that cart yet. He doesn't care. 
seventy thousand in it, over seventy thousand, and you're not struggling for power or dealing with the mud too bad. Nope, not a, not a thing. It's going good. In fact, I had to throttle her down because she wants to bounce a little bit while I'm going across the road, and so it's good. Before it gets too dark, I'm going to try to knock these beans out here and fight the mud while we have daylight. And for that, I figure I'll mount the can camera out here so you guys can watch the tires. Well, it wasn't as bad as I thought, and I didn't get stuck, which is good for me. Probably disappointing for you guys. I wish the window wasn't so dirty, but man, do I love this time of night. You can see the neighbors going off in the distance there. They got funny red machinery, but hey, Hey, they're people too. For my other farmers, the second that sun goes down, it gets instantly freezing cold in here and I gotta actually turn the heat on, which is rare for me. But the temperature change inside the cab when the sun quits coming through the windows, feels like about 40 degrees. Who else? Anybody else experience that? See these burnt up beans? This is where that prairie air reel comes in handy. Well, we're back into better beans now anyway, but that air reel is Air, not not real, but wind system, air system, is really helping to push the short ones back into the header. Right back in there. Coochie, coochie, coo. I'm sorry, I, I'm bored. Mrs. Millennial Farmer cooked me supper. Let's see what she's got. What do you guys have? That is so scary. <laughs> is it terrifying? Oh, God. Why would that be terrifying coming at you? eat my suburban. Hopefully not eat my lunch. What do you have, Isla? Sand. Kinetic sand? sand. Kinetic sand? Pretty colorful sand. Are you going to... Oh, you have to wait till you get home? That's a good idea. Are you going to mix them all together and make brown? No, they came like that. It's rainbow. Oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the home-cooked meal. Anyone else notice that I've got a Hardy's bag and a Taco Bell cup? We are a bunch of health nuts around here. I have a camera, I'm watching the pipes. Those guys are watching the pipes. Oh, don't mind me, guys. We drop I'm just uh, push them together. We listening to the Off the Husk podcast yeah, with the Millennial Farmer. I think I see maybe and Mrs. Millennial Farmer. And Master Pipe Stop. Player Randy. Check that connection, make sure it was Check it out, still link in the together. description. Sure. So Shameless plug. Pit stop. It's gotta be a restroom. Oh, there we go. Well, I couldn't find the sink, but I figure I'll walk back here and see what kind of job we're doing. It's good to get out, check every once in a while, stretch the legs. Onyx, did you get any deer? No. No deer tonight? But you saw some? Yes. Yes. Awesome harvest moon out there tonight. Here is the final cart of the evening. I ended up getting the back way more full than I needed to. But that's all right. So if you made it to the end of this video, let me know. And then also let me know if you're a farmer or not a farmer. Because I haven't asked that question for quite a while. I'm curious to see where those comments go. Who's a farmer? Who's not a farmer? If you're not a farmer, why did you start watching a channel about farming? If you are a farmer and you're watching a channel about farming, you're just crazy. But I get it, you know? We're all a little crazy in our own ways. And it is now 1.30 in the morning. I'm going to go to bed. <laughs>